Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide to 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to any one of these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 175. Please turn to it. Page number 175 the very last problem on the page, number 166. 166, let's see, let's see what it has to say. We are told that a border, a border of uniform width is placed around a rectangular photo around a rectangular photo that is 8 by 10 so we have a rectangular photo which is 8 by 10 and we're going to put a border around it question and we are told that the area of the border area of the border we are told is 144 square inches what you simply is what's the what's the width what's the width of the border that we're going to put around the picture so here's our picture we are told that the picture itself is 8 by 10 so here's the 8 there's the 10 that's our picture and around it we're going to put a uniform border we're going to put a uniform border around it voila and the question is what's the area of the of the border now listen, this is an algebra problem. Just excuse me one second. I have a little bit of a cold. This is an algebra problem as you can clearly see. And as always, we have two choices, two ways we can go about it. One way to tackle this problem is to do it in a very, very algebraic, very traditional, very classical, very conventional, very orthodox, very academic, very algebraic way. Other way is to find some quick and dirty way uh, to tackle this thing, so through, through a backdoor, backdoor approach, if you will. This problem, the nature of this problem is such that the answer choice is the question, nature, of the nature of the problem is such that the question is very straightforward. What is the width? The answer is some numerical value, and they give you the five values. Obviously, the answer choices are answer choices are A, B, C, D, and E. Three, four, six, eight, and nine. One of those, of course, has to be the right answer. One of those has to be, of course, the right answer. So why don't we try one at random and see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. And if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. The trial and error approach that I'm describing here, how many times do you suppose you'll end up trying if you, if you were to approach the problem in that manner? If you're sitting there telling me five times or four times, well, I have a good news for you. The good news is that whenever the algebraic problems are of this nature, where the answers are numerical, listen very carefully, whenever they give you an algebraic problem where the answers are numerical, the answer choices are always arranged in order. They are always arranged either in ascending order, as they are here, in the increasing order, or in descending order. They are never mixed up. And therefore, the smart way to, 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 to approach this problem is to start from the happy medium. Start from the happy medium. Try out that thing. Pretend that the answer to the question, the question is how much is the width. Pretend that the width is 6. Put it back in the problem and see if it works. Well, if it works, if it fits, you're done. Answer is C. If it doesn't work, you should be able to tell, most in most cases, in the vast majority of the cases, you should be able to tell whether the number is too small or too large. But if it turns out, the dash number is too large. If it turns out the six is too large, what does it tell you? It tells you if six is too large, then six cannot be the answer. Neither can eight, neither can nine. 
you try one of the other two. Try one more time, one of the other two. Try four or three. If you try four, and if it turns out that four works, then you're done. The answer is B. If it turns out that the four is still too large, you're still done. The answer is A. In the worst case scenario, you'll have to try only twice. Only twice, because you know which way to move now. That's what we're going to do here. Let's pretend that the answer is six. Let's pretend that the width is six. We do not know, but we're going to pretend it is six. Because that's our such C. That's the answer to I C. Now head the answer to I C. Instead of instead of C, instead of C, instead of six in the answer to I C. If they had said six million, then we would have pretended six million. Whatever it says in the middle of the five numbers, whatever falls in the middle, that's what you pretend that the answer is, and you go from there. It will give us the directions, which will tell us which direction to move in. Do you understand? So let's do that. Watch what happens. If this is six, then this bit is also six. Right? Same thing here. Same thing here. This is six, and this is six. What do you suppose is the area of this rectangle? What do you suppose is the area of this rectangle? I have a nasty cold and a runny nose. I, I am sorry. You're going to have to excuse me every few seconds. What do you suppose is the area of the bottom triangle here? Well, this bottom triangle that you saw, bottom rectangle rather, is 6 plus 8 plus 6, 6 plus 8 plus 6. 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 20. This thing that you see here is 20, 20 by, and how much is this? This is also 6. This is also 6 because that's the width of the, that's the width. The width is same all the way around. It's 20 by 6. It is 120. The area of the bottom rectangle alone, the area of this bottom rectangle alone is 120. The top one is the same one. The top one is the same one. It's 120. 120 plus 120 it's already 240, it's already 240, and we haven't even talked about this part, we haven't even talked about this part and that part. We have these two to go yet still. What does it tell us? It tells us that 6 is too large. 6 is way too large, way, way too large. We are already approaching 240, it's supposed to be 140. We are already 100 square inches more than what the border is supposed to be, and when we, we haven't even counted this or that. And because of the fact that this is so large, I'm not going to try 4. My gut feeling tells me that probably is 3. And if it turns out that 3 is too small, then the answer is B. That's it. We, not, we don't have to try one more time. Let's try 3. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to try 3 this time. And see what happens. Okay, so it's very simple, very straightforward. Here is our picture. Here is our picture here. We, this is 8 and this is 10. We're going to pretend that the border is 3, this border is 3, and this is 3, and this is 3. So this is 3, this side here is 3 plus 8 plus 3. You see, 3 plus 8 plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 8 is, 6 plus 8 is 14. So it's 14, this thing that you see here, is 14 times 3. The bottom one here, 14 times 3. How much is 14 times 3? Well, I know 15 times 3 is 45. That I do know. If 15 3 is a 45, then 14 3 has to be 3 less than 45 is 42. It is 42. But don't forget we have two of them. There is one on the top as well. They are identical. They are all, they are, there are two of them. It's two times that amount. That's 84. Now we take care of this guy. This guy is very simple. This is, this, this from here to here is the, is the, length of the picture which we are told is 10 right here, it is 10 and the border is 3, this right here this guy that you see there, it is 10 by 3, I'm going to put it in a different color so we can see it it's 10 by 3 this rectangle is 10 by 3 and so is this one, 10 by 3 10 by 3 plus a 10 by 3 that's 30 plus 30, that is 60. So we're going to add 60 more to it. We're going to add 60 more to it, and what do we get? 4 and 144. That's exactly what the problem tells us that the border is. So the border is 144. That's exactly what we find. The answer is, in fact, 3. That's all. Now, every once in a while, this is not something what I'm about to say does not happen very often, but every once in a while it does happen where you are really pressed for time and you simply don't have the time to try one more time. Well, that's okay. Even in that scenario, what you do is you start from the middle and you make a determination whether 
6 works, if 6 works you're lucky, you get lucky the answer is C if, middle, if the C does not work then you know, you can, if you can tell whether it's too large or too small in this case it turns out that C is too large right away we knew the answer can be C, D or E now if I don't have the time to try one more time I just flip a coin I just flip a coin, either it's A or B a 50-50 chance on a problem where I actually didn't have the time to actually solve it it's a very good chance, it's a damn good chance do you understand? it's a bloody good chance of a, of a, of a uh, of, of a situation in, in situations where you did not have the time to actually finish the whole thing but anyway the answer here is three now for those of you for those of you who insist on sol solving this thing in a little bit of a classical way a little bit of an academic way we're going to do that too just to please you do you understand only only if you're hell bent in it uh, only if you're hell bent on it so let's do it we're going to start again I need the room obviously We can erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this. Look, okay, so let's do it in a, in a classical way. In a classical way, of course, this thing is still 10, this side is still 10 from here to here, this is still 10, but this is no longer 3, this is the width, that's the unknown part, so we're going to call it x. x, okay, watch what happens. So can you tell me what's the area of this this rec uh, red rectangle, let's call it A, B, C, and D. This red rectangle that you see here, the red rectangle right here that you see here, the width is x, the width is x, and the length is 10. The width is x, and the length is 10, so it's 10x times 2 because we have one more here now let's do the bottom one here the bottom one again same thing this guy is 8 and this is going to be x from here to here is x and then from here to here is under x so it's x plus 8 plus x is going to be 8 plus 2x 8 plus 2x that's, that's the width here and how much is the length the length is 10 plus x plus x this is x, this is x, 10 plus x plus x. So that's the, going to be the area of the house. Oh, what am, I, what am I doing here? No, 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 no. That's it, we're done. It's 8, 8 plus 2x, which is the length from here to here, and the width is this x here. 8 plus 2x, 8 plus 2x times x, and there are two of them, because there is one on the top. So this is the border. This area, this area, the, those two, and then top and the bottom, x times 8 plus 2x, 8x times 8 plus 2x, and 10 times x, 10 times x, and two of those. And all of this, this quantity, this quantity that you see here, and this quantity has, has to add up to 144. That's what we are told. We are told that the border equals 144. So let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Let's open the parentheses first of all. Now the very first thing we find here, the very first thing we notice here is that we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here, and this is 144. Why don't we divide everything by 2? Divide, divide the whole thing by 2. Divide this by 2. Divide the entire equation by 2. Divide the whole thing by 2. So we can get rid of, so we can get rid of this 2 goes out with that 2, this 2 goes out with that 2, and this is going to become 72. Are you with me so far? It's very important that you stay with me in the story. So now, let's, now the story begins. 10x, and then here we're going to open the parentheses. 8 times x is going to be 8x, and x times 2x is going to be 2x squared, and that comes out to be 72 right here. Let's combine the two, two parts here. 18x plus 2x squared equals 72. Again, divide the whole equation by 2, divide this side by 2, that side by 2, and we're going to end up with x squared plus 9x equals 36. We're almost there. Now, from this point, you have two choices. You have two choices. Listen carefully. You have two choices. You can go this route and solve this quadratic equation, solve this quadratic equation either with a quadratic formula or via factorization. That's one choice. I'm not going to go that route. There is a simpler way. 
There is a simpler way, there is a more straightforward way. There is no need to make, make our life miserable. Here's what you do. Leave it alone the way it is and take out the x common. Take out the x common, you get x plus 9 equals 36. It's very straightforward. Think about it. Can you think of two numbers where one is 9 more than the other and their product is 36? One number times that number, 9 more than that number equals 36. Of course, that number is 3 times 12. 3 times 12 is 36. There you go. x is 12. Uh, x is 3, which is exactly what we found there. x is equal to 3. That's all. Now, one last comment. If you still do not like what I did here, if you feel that this is this is not this is not the proper way to do it, if you want to solve this thing properly, I'll tell you another video that you can watch in the very in the, in the video that I'm about to tell you, which is the classical way in the purest sense. The classical way in the purest sense of the word. If you want to watch that video, and that video would be just type in GMAT math. GMAT math, just like here, GMAT math, day 185. GMAT math, that day 185, and watch that video if you like, and there you will see the solution, as I said, in the most classical way. Alright? Bye now.